I'm Ben Swan filling in for Steve Malzberg. Our Malzberg panel continues with the co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM, Rick Unger, and senior partner and owner of the law offices of Adam M. Thompson and syndicated talk show host and TV commentator Adam M. Thompson. Guys, thanks for staying with us. All right, so let's talk about uh, the president playing golf shortly after the video was released showing journalist James Foley's death. Uh, the president, you know, came out, he made a statement, but he went right back to the golf course. He's getting a lot of heat for this. Uh, Rick, certainly bad form, it would appear. Well, he actually got some heat from me, I have to say. You know, I, I do think that people make way too big of a fuss about presidents taking vacations and playing golf. And, and that goes for all presidents. I mean, I don't beat up on this president for it. I didn't beat up on the last one or any that came before them. But I actually did write a column on Wednesday where I did complain about the president playing golf on that particular day. Nation was in mourning. A terrible thing had happened to one of our fellow countrymen the night before. It's just not the time to go out and giggle with your buddies and play golf. I thought it was a bad idea. You know, Adam, uh, obviously a lot of folks um, have looked at this and said, look, let's face it, this president has spent less time on vacations golfing than his predecessor at this point. George W. Bush was on the golf course constantly. Um, is too much being made of this or was it bad form? It's very bad form. Boy, look at this. Rick and I are agreeing on two things today, both I know, topics. I'm you, two it's a show mean, today. <laughs> unbelievable. You know what? It, it almost seems like President Obama and his administration are doing everything by uh, foreign policy for dummies. Like they took this book and they're just turning pages and saying, what do we do next and have no idea. This was a death Don't of a journalist. Away. It was publicized everywhere. And you want to show your heartfelt, sincerest apologies to the family about what happened, and you want to send a strong message. And the strong message is really going to affect three people, or three groups of people, the terrorists, the international community, and it's going to affect American citizens. And when the message you send is, I give a quick speech and then go back to playing golf, and you're shown playing golf, giggling and laughing, like what you just did moments before was meaningless or unimportant. That sends such a, a terrible message to all three communities. It's very hard to really recover from that in the eyes of those people. But the terrorists think you're weak and don't care. The international community thinks you don't know how to handle a situation like this, and you find other things more important. And the American public thinks that you're disinterested and really don't have that heartfelt apology that you want to be sincere on, being truthful, being accurate, and being sincere. Very bad across the but board. To be, to be fair, Adam, there is another way you could interpret that point. Uh, actually, I'm trying to remember who, oh, it was Joe Scarborough who said, you know, those terrorists could be sitting there looking at him going, that is one cold-hearted guy. He's able to go out and play golf after all this. We better watch out for him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I seriously doubt it. I, 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 don't I doubt that ISIS that is thinking you know, this, that, that Obama's to too tough to because he's playing golf. Ways. I don't buy that let, at let all. Me sh let me show you guys this, because when I saw this was happening and, and a lot was being made of it, the president, you know, golfing afterwards, it reminded me, it triggered something in my mind, uh, of this clip from 2002 with former President George W. Bush doing a very similar thing. Take a look. We must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. Yeah, the, right. the now the watch this Times. drive. Because, again, and that, would Joe Scarborough say the same thing about this president? I mean, that president, if it were the same thing? I don't think so. Probably not. Instead, what would happen is they would say, oh, look, he looks calloused and he looks like he's in another world. Now, listen, let's face it. These guys need time for rest and relaxation. They need time to be able to clear their heads. We understand. But at some point, don't you have to show empathy that such a horrific thing happened, especially when the family was hoping that you would have intervened? Well, look, I mean, I, I, I remember what was said when President Bush did that, and of course, people like me jumped all over him. Uh, and I don't think it's unfair for people to jump all over President Obama in this situation. But let's not get carried away with it. All right. Guys, thanks so much for being with us, our panel. We enjoyed it very much. Have a great weekend. You too. We'll be back after Thank this. You. Her name is synonymous with the struggle for equal rights throughout America. But when Rosa Parks stepped on that Montgomery, Alabama bus on December 1st, 1955, she didn't set out to make history. She just wanted to get home. Montgomery's segregated buses had divided seating, 
white passengers in front, colored passengers in the back. Contrary to popular belief, Rosa was sitting in the back of the bus. But when the bus driver needed more seats for his white passengers, he ordered her and three others to vacate their seats. The others complied and moved. But Rosa quietly refused and was quickly arrested. Working alongside Dr. Martin Luther King, Rosa's arrest sparked a highly effective citywide protest with African Americans boycotting city buses. December 5th was the day the people stayed off in large numbers and did not ride the bus. In fact, most of the buses, I think all of them were just about empty. Rosa's protest and resulting boycott didn't end segregation, but it sparked a movement that ended the racial system, paving the way for a more equal society. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.